It is said that education is the key to success, but if we look more closely into the statement, we can see that there are some very strong cultural assumptions at play. In the book Ecojustice Education, Martusowicz, Edmondson, and Lupinacci explain how ways of thinking become entrenched in society, molded and reinforced through the language we use. They discuss how root metaphors guide us to believe that our institutions are inevitable or natural. In other words, root metaphors are the deeply ingrained beliefs and values that permeate society. We accept these as normal and natural because they surround us. But in reality, as Martusowicz and her co-writers contend, quote, these institutions and the related mindset they represent have been created, inherited, and reproduced by people over generations, end quote. They are not natural at all, but constructed by humans and the way we see the world. In particular, in Western society, the world is arranged into hierarchized dualisms. That is, differences are arranged into a hierarchy, and traits or people associated with lower status naturally justify the domination of traits or people considered higher status. This is evident in how we treat the environment and others. They are thought of as resources for those at the top. Centric thinking relates to this, with its tendencies to radically exclude or minimize the interests of the non-elite or natural world, while simultaneously elevating the interests of the powerful and value in society. Our educational system is a prime example of where this plays out. Deloria and Wildcat point this out in Power and Place, where they contrast it with indigenous views. From a Native American perspective, the natural and social world are interconnected and unified. There is no top-down hierarchy, but rather relationships, and these must be understood in order to make sense of the world. Not so in Western thought, however, which separates and isolates parts of interrelated systems, making it difficult for students from American Indian culture to study in classrooms where this is the approach to teaching. Our root metaphors, the language that shapes how we think, prevents us from experiencing the world outside of hierarchies, and thinking in terms of dualisms and hierarchies supports the logic of domination. Meritocracy is another concept that is supported by our root metaphors. Eco-justice education brings up that children receive quite different types of education, very much determined by the greater patterns of economic structure. The power that the upper class holds originates through its ownership of land and accumulation of money. To maintain these, as well as to increase their holdings, their position at the top of the economic ladder must be justified, and this is where the control over education becomes of utmost importance. It is through schools and education that the upper class exerts what Martusowicz, Edmondson, and Lupinacci refer to as ideological power. Au, in Unequal by Design, speaks of how the elite work to establish their own perspective as common sense. And isn't it common sense that teachers and students are not working hard enough if they fail to achieve certain educational goals, as shown in standardized test results? The belief that everyone can advance through their own efforts is deeply ingrained in us from childhood, and to question the veracity of this is to be, in a way, un-American. Enclosure is a practice that acts on the root metaphor of ownership, meaning power and control of a resource. Specifically in this system is the belief, quote, that some individuals are more deserving of the goods and services needed to live than are others, end quote. Anion's work in Radical Possibilities outlines how decisions made by big business and by the government act to the detriment of large portions of the population. When people are not able to provide for themselves because resources or access to resources have been limited through enclosure, the result is deprivation, both culturally and physically. They are viewed as responsible for their poverty, partly due to the false notion of meritocracy. In an educational context, when academic performance does not improve dramatically after the introduction of standardized tests, 
the students affected are categorized as incapable or unintelligent. These are labels given by those in power. Funding is often stripped away from failing schools, and the enclosure of education as a resource for upper classes continues. However, we must remember that there is nothing inherently natural about the status quo. It can be altered if we choose to do so. In their book, We Make the Road by Walking, Horton and Freyer discuss the responsibility that educators have to challenge inequalities and current ways of thinking about them. Freyer states, quote, we have to invent with the people the ways for them to go beyond their state of thinking, end quote. And that means to examine and to question root metaphors that do not serve everyone equally.